As you may have already seen in episode 18 of On Course, I recently headed into central London to take a look at a couple of blue water cruisers. It's not the obvious place to find them, but both were on display at the new London Luxury Show at St Catherine Docks. And while one of them, the Oyster 495, was brand spanking new and enjoying her first outing into the spotlight, the Halberg Rassi 57 has been around for a few years. She was launched in 2019, shortly before the world shut down and never quite got the attention she deserved. Which is a shame, because this 57-footer makes a subtle but significant departure for a very well-known and respected brand that's famous for sticking to its principles, come what may. So, having sailed many Halberg Rassies, I went to find out more from UK agent Jeremy Mason, who's more than served his time with the Swedish brand. Over 30 years now. Gosh. Oh, yeah, I think th over 30 years this, this year, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, in which case you will know exactly why this boat is so important, because I've read bits and pieces about it and there's quite a lot of interest in this boat. What's new about this 57? Well, uh, the, the Halberg Rassi range has always been uh, evolving, and this is the latest evolution of the, of the Halberg Rassi design, the Halberg Rassi range. So our customers are customers who want to go sailing, they're adventurous sailors. A lot of long distance ocean passage making. Ocean passage making is done downwind where, where possible. So uh, the boat has been optimised for downwind sailing, optimised for, for, for passage making speeds as well. So the boats now have a much wa longer waterline length. The, uh, uh, the plum stem and the, and the plum stern uh, add to the accommodation down below as well. We've got a lot more beam further aft, so Very we've got a lot more up. space yeah. down below. With a plumb stem, obviously if you're going cruising, you want to be able to anchor. Uh, so we have now the, the incorporated a, a, a bowsprit with a substantial integral stem head roller so that it carries the anchor away from the stem, which can be an issue with, with plumb stems. And of course, with the fractional rigs as well, modern fractional rigs, very stable rigs, a lot of power in the mainsail, smaller headsails. So again, for, for, uh, for lighter airs and off-wind sailing, um, asymmetrics, code zeros uh, are, the, are the popular sail now. And the bowsprit lends itself to, to that sort of thing. I function see you've well. also got a uh, what looks like a furler just in front yeah, of the headsail. Is that, that for a code zero? It's fantastic, yeah, fantastic for a furling code zero. So the Ferling Code Zero takes the place of what would be a big overlapping Genoa in lighter conditions, but, but actually can carry you to windward as well in light conditions. I mean, I mean, what you've just described there is a whole series of incremental changes, isn't it? Which has mm. actually made for quite a modern looking boat, as you say, with the plumb bow, plumb stern and the rest yeah. of it. And yet she's still got that very distinctive Halberg Rassi look, not least of all yeah. the blue stripe down the well, side. The blue stripe, the blue stripe, of course, you have to have the blue stripe. There's no, there's no alternative for that. But the, but the build quality is, is also is, it has has evolved with the with the boats. The boats are a lot more technical now, and so you have to be able to uh, produce those systems in a reliable and repeatable way. And and the yard have always been very on top of technology. They've never been leading it with a cutting edge, but, but they've always been there, and once it's understood, they know how to build it. I mean, the late Christoph Rassi, who was obviously the founder of, of the company, but he, yeah. uh, he, I always remember him being very, very dogmatic about things. He was, he was very traditional, wasn't he? And he would stick to, he wouldn't deviate from what he felt was the right way to go. And I wonder how he, how he felt or about the move towards these modern things. Was that, did that yeah. come from him or did he need persuading into this no, kind of stuff? No, I think it, it would have been natural to him because the, uh, it, when, when Halberg Rassi started building Freyr's designed hulls, when they, when they started using German Freyr's for, uh, for, for hull designs, a lot of the older Halberg Rassi owners would say, oh, Halberg Rassi have really changed. They've, they've, you know, they're building a different boat now. It's got a bolt-on keel. It's got a, a, a partial skeg rudder rather than a rather than a full skeg and a long keel, or an encapsulated keel. But uh, the the range, as I was saying before, has always evolved, and this has been a natural evolution for the style of sailors that we're building boats for. 
Um, and, and, and so I don't think he'd have been shocked by this. The, to get the, the, the off-wind performance and the light air's performance, the boat has uh, flatter sections further aft and a broader stern further aft, so you have to have twin rudders. It's the, it's the only way to, to manage this sort of hull shape. But the interesting thing about the hull shape is that as you come further forward uh, to the point of maximum beam, because we still, you know, the, 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 the hull still wastes towards the transom, but in the maximum beam area, we still have a very full and rounded hull shape above the keel. And that full and rounded hull shape gives it its comfort at sea. So you haven't sacrificed uh, sea kindliness for performance. You've actually managed to combine the two. What about close quarters handing under engine? That's often the shortcoming, yeah. isn't it, of twin rudders because you've got no prop watch over uh, the uh, rudder. Do you have a stern thruster on this? On this boat, we've got a bow thruster and stern thruster and you could do almost anything you mm. want with it. It also adds to the, 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 the short-handed sailing aspect of the boat. The boat is designed to be sailed by a family crew. You know, it's, not a, it's not a boat that's going to have lots of crew grinding on winches and so on. It's designed to be able to sail, be sailed by one person. Uh, and the issue that you have then with a bigger boat is when you're coming into restrictive areas like this, how do you maneuver the boat when you're single-handed? And this boat, you can sail single-handed and maneuver single-handed quite effectively. Talking of things that are bigger, what about the price tag? What does this boat start at? Well, in, in sterling today, we'd be looking at about 1. Uh, 1.4 plus VAT, well, plus extras and plus VAT. So it, you know, you're, you're going to be north of £2 million, mm. certainly, uh, for a boat like this. Which, in this league, is pretty much it's, it's, what you're going to expect it, to find, isn't there it? It's there or thereabouts, yes, yeah. with, the, with the comparable boats. Mm. Good. Well, it'd be great to have a little look down below if we can. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be very welcome. Great. <laughs> Just before we go down below, one of the things strokes me about this cockpit is it's deep isn't it it's, yeah. it's just like a traditional halberg Rassi cockpit and very much so it's, a, it's it's got the same ergonomics it's got the same comfort and the same depth of a halberg Rassi cockpit halberg Rassi have always uh, kept then they've not been looking for accommodation underneath the cockpit it's always been machine space so you're able to get that depth of cockpit which gives you the feeling of security inside the cockpit the difference with the 57 now and the additional beam is that we've got a much wider cockpit. So we've got a lot more space in the cockpit and the, and the cockpit table becomes quite essential to, to be able to brace yourself against. And uh, we've even got a little thing that pops out the front here so that you can, uh, so who's ever at the front oh, of the cockpit <laughs> can brace themselves as well. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Obviously twin wheels have become quite popular over mm -hmm. the years and they've also seemed to be creeping further and further back in the boat. But as yeah. a result, they're getting, they're getting higher. And much as I, you know, like we were saying, they have lots of benefits. One of the things that's always concerned me a little bit is that as they start to get higher, you do actually start to feel a bit more exposed. It's fine on a yeah. nice sunny day when you get a great view forwards. Yeah. But when it's a bit gnarly and a bit unpleasant, you feel yeah. quite exposed. And here, you've got the best of both worlds because they're actually, the, the wheels are quite low in the cockpit. They're nice and deep. There's not really any step, any significant step back up to the, the wheels from the cockpit. So it's very easy to move from the forward part of the cockpit where you might be standing watch to move to the wheel to, if you want to make a course alteration. Uh, so, yeah, no, the, the, and, and again, there's no accommodation underneath uh, where the wheels are. So the wheels are at the same level as the cockpit or similar level to the cockpit. So you still have that security when you're at the wheel, not just when you're in the forward part of the cockpit. Mm. Well, the first thing that strikes me is what a lot of volume down below. I mean, it's huge yeah. headroom as well. Yeah, yeah, plenty of headroom, plenty of beam, um, plenty of light coming in as well. We've got light coming in from all sorts of areas, but it still, it still retains a relatively low coach roof, prevents too much heat coming into the, into the saloon. Um, and it's uh, and also we've we've lowered all the bulkheads, so all the half bulkheads that were were structural parts of the older hulls. Um, now we have the, the the bulkheads all lowered so that your eye line sees much further through the boat. And overall, the layout looks fairly conventional with the longitudinal galley on port, yeah. navigation station on starboard. This huge great big. Um, saloon area here and what yeah. about the sleeping so what are the options on sleeping 
The, the, the options really are two cabins forward with a shared heads compartment, heads and shower compartment forward, and then a, a master cabin aft with, uh, with a, a, a ensuite heads and shower compartment there. Um, centerline double berth aft is, uh, is, uh, is, is, pro is probably the way all of them have been built so far. You, we can still do the, the twin and, uh, or the double and the, and the single passage making berth in the aft cabin, which has always been popular with Halberg Rassi. And on this boat, because we have a big sail locker ahead of the accommodation uh, that, that's accessed through the deck, um, we can put a centerline double berth in the forward cabin as well. So um, this boat's got a centerline double berth in the forward cabin, centerline double berth in the aft cabin, and then uh, a, a, a berth that is a very generous single berth, almost a double berth, on the starboard cabin with a Pullman berth over the top. Oh, okay. So the other thing that strikes me is it looks like, is this an oak finish? It looks like oak. Yeah. It is oak. Yes. So mahogany is still the standard finish for Halberg Rassi. Uh, the, uh, mahogany is the traditional Halberg Rassi finish, always has been. But, but now oak has become quite popular. Mm. It's a much lighter wood. It's not the, the really white American style oak, it's, it's a European oak, so it's got quite a lot of character and, uh, and it does make the, the boat lighter down below. One of the things that used to, and, and maybe unfairly, but uh, used to characterise Herberg Rassies was certainly amongst those of us who used to go and test loads of boats was that the running joke was that um, there's a long, long options list, and if it's not on the options list, you're not having it. You can't have it, because you had to get past Christoph Rassi, and there was no way that if it wasn't there, you're not having it. Do you... Is that still the case now, that there's a very... It's very strict, as in, you can have this? We're not custom builders, and the, the, the beauty of the, of the build of the boat is really that everything is understood before it's built. All of our customers really will collect their boats from there, will hand the boat over in Sweden, and they'll sail the boat back to their home port. The last thing we want is any... They're, they're heading straight out into the North Sea, basically. And so we want the boats to be reliable and work from the day they take delivery of the boat. Well, it's certainly very hard to argue against that anyway, given how many companies have come and gone in the time that Halberg Rassi has been around. And it's, mm. it's still... It's still a family business, you know. It's yeah, still a... which is very impressive. Mm. Yeah. Well, she's a lovely boat, Jeremy. Thank you very much for showing it. To You're me. welcome. Really nice. You're I welcome. sort of want to go sailing now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's out. The wind's up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mind we're you, just we're on the Thames. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not quite so easy to arrange. Anyway, another time. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. You're welcome.